many. How many ears do you have? Two. How many ears do you need? That's a trickier question. Of course, a boy or girl can hear with only one ear. Alice was born in Belarus with hearing in only one ear. Alice was born a month early. He didn't weigh as much as other babies. When he was three months old, his mother took him to a doctor for tests. During those tests, the doctor found that Alice could only hear with one ear. Alice's mother was shocked. She worked with children who were deaf. She loved them just as much as she loved children who could hear, but she never imagined that her own child wouldn't be able to hear with two ears. She thought that the doctor must have made a mistake. Because she worked with children who couldn't hear, she also knew how to run hearing tests. So she ran a hearing test on little Alice. The test showed that Alice really couldn't hear with both ears. But Alice's mother still didn't want to believe it. She took him to a special hospital for children with hearing difficulties. The doctor ran his own test. Alice's mother watched the test on a monitor. She saw deep inside Alice's ears. One ear looked normal, the other one didn't. She saw that nothing could be done to help. She began to cry. The doctor, however, didn't want to see her tears. Why are you crying? He said gruffly. Your son can hear with one ear and that's enough. Back home, Alice's mother cried and cried. Then she talked to God. Why did you allow this to happen? She asked. After a while, she turned on some music on her phone. A beautiful hymn started playing. It was called, Nearer My God to Thee. Alice's mother had heard the hymn many times since she was a little girl, but for the first time, she understood that God really was near her. It felt good to know that God was near, but she still didn't want to believe that Alice would never hear with one ear. She kept on talking to God. You can do anything, she said. If you gave life to my son with only one ear, you could heal him and give him life with two ears. Three months passed and Alice's father had a birthday. He didn't want a cake for his birthday. He didn't want any presents. He only wanted Alice to hear with both ears. Our son will hear, he said. God will do this as a gift for my birthday. They prayed and took Alice to the hospital for another hearing test. There was nowhere to sit while they waited. Alice's mother carried him in her arms and he felt so heavy. Finally, the doctor called them in. When he finished the test, he said, your son can hear perfectly with both ears. Alice's mother couldn't believe her ears. She was so happy. This is a miracle of God, she exclaimed. Indeed, it was a miracle. Alice's mother had seen inside his ears on the monitor three months earlier. She had seen that no doctor could help Alice. But the great physician, Jesus Christ, had healed her boy, and now he could hear with both ears. Alice's father wept with joy at the news. He was so happy that God had given him such a wonderful gift on his birthday. Today, Alice is six years old, and he can hear perfectly well with both ears. He uses his ears to learn Bible verses. He uses his ears to learn songs. He would like to use his ears to learn to become a doctor and to help other boys and girls. He knows that his hearing is a gift from God.
what came to mind is, have your ears been hearing the birds earlier and earlier and earlier? It's where it's like, can I ignore them long enough to sleep another hour? Oh, I so love these long days, though. I just I like the extra sunshine. Well, let's stand together. We'll sing our anthem, Oh, Magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify, oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord, oh, magnify the Lord, and may his name be lifted in high forever. Can you hold for a minute? Oh, we do have. We just don't have them back there. Okay. Chorus. A uh, second verse. Oh, worship him. Oh, worship him. Christ the Lord. And let us exalt his name together. Oh, worship Christ the Lord. Oh, worship Christ the Lord. And may his name be lifted high forever. King of kings and Lord of lords, may his name be lifted high forever. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord. And may his name be lifted high forever. Excellent is thy name, O Lord, how excellent is thy name. Heaven and earth together proclaim, how excellent is thy name. How excellent is thy name, O Lord, how excellent is thy name. Heaven and earth together proclaim, how excellent is thy name. Father, it's great to gather in your house, in your name, on the day that you have created for us to rest. We consider it a delight, and thank you that you are here with us. Amen. You may be seated. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We're glad you came. For those here, for those online, um, it has been a blessed week, and I hope it has been for everyone. Um, I can see the Lord is coming soon, can't you? It's like, oh my goodness, and it's so important that we tell everybody that he is so that they can really get that peace that they need here in these last days. Um, I would like to first um, mention the offering. It goes to our Oregon Conference Youth Support. Um, as you know, we also support um, all of our youth as well. Uh, so the Youth Support Fund at the Oregon Conference, um, it goes to the, the youth and young adults. It provides to the conference academies. Portion goes to Big Lake Camp and Young Adult Ministries. Um, and also uh, to mark the envelopes, if you'd like to um, support the Orchard's student aid, this is the one that goes to the schools that we support there. Um, there's also going to be a celebration of life for Terry Rank 
June 1st at the Vancouver Community Church. He's not a member, was not a member here, but I guess he has a lot of uh, friends that go to our church. So, And we'll put that in the bulletin next week as well. Um, please read your bulletin. It does have a lot of good uh, announcements in there. Um, don't forget the tamale fundraiser. They're really good. This is for the kids that are going to Campari. And next Sabbath, we will have our new pastor coming. I have to interrupt you on the Campari just to let everyone know. Um, it, this is our last fundraiser. And as of the end of this month, we will have met our goal three Yay. months early. Wow. And so Praise we want to... Yes, we want to say thank you to the entire uh, church because you've just provided incredible support. That's and uh, they're now preparing, getting all the summer stuff done to get ready to go back to Gillette. I was about to say Oshkosh, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah, um, so I wanted to say thank you. And as soon as the board you know, makes their stuff, why we'll probably be changing the, the offerings on a week-to-week -week basis back to children's some other program. Yeah, okay. So, okay? But I just Great. want to thank the church. Okay? Yeah. Praise the Lord for that. And this is an incredible event. Um, I have a brother who works for the conference in Arizona, and he has this incredible booth on Egypt in there. It's amazing what these people do to present scripture to these children. So um, if you could go, if there's any room left in any hotels, go and take a look at this. Um, again, our uh, next Sabbath, um, Pastor Alex Portillo will be speaking, so we get our new pastor. And please, if you haven't had a chance, there's little um, uh, pieces of paper that are out in the foyer that you can write a welcome to the new pastor and his family. So uh, please take that opportunity to do that. They're gonna post it on the bulletin downstairs uh, just as a welcome. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to let you all know, thank you for being here. Happy Sabbath. And oh, and pipe. here's an important message. It is your spiritual duty, your church duty, to go buy a pie from Costco and eat it and bring the pie pans here to church because Nadine's running out of pie pans to feed the homeless. So there is a nice circle of service in there. And the covers. So it's not only the pie pan, but the covers as well, because that's what we use to deliver it over to Portland Rescue Mission. And there's what, how many pies do you make? 24 pies. We need a lot of pie pans and extras just in case. So please, this week, go buy a pie from Costco. Eat it. This week, <laughs> go buy a pie from Costco. It'll give you a month to eat it. And please, bring those pie pans and their covers um, uh, when you can, but before, next, um, before the fourth weekend of next um, month, uh, as we can really use them to serve. Thank you so much. Happy Sabbath, everyone. How shall we proceed? <laughs> Crown him with many crowns, is that in there? That's one that's in the hymn book that we could sing, crown him with many crowns. I don't know which number, you guys can look it up.
Guys, the words on the first song are really complicated. You are my God, you are my king, you are my master. My everything, you are my Lord. That's, that's more than that's just repetition on that. The second one, lift high the Lord, our banner. Lift high the Lord, Jesus King. Lift high the Lord, our banner. Lift high your praise to him. Sing. Number 223. You guys look that up. Let's go ahead and, uh, Chris, let's go ahead and just sing through this. Um, I think I want that page, but it's not happening. Nope, I want this page back here. That's why it's not happening. Londa, go ahead. Let's, let's, we're going to sing through this, and if you guys want to hum along, sing along, whatever. Um, you are my God, you are my King, you are my Master, my everything. You are my Lord, that's why I sing to you. Alleluia, Alleluia. You want to do that again? You are my God, you are my King. You are my master, my everything. You are my Lord, that's why I sing to you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Moving on, do you have, is, is there a key change? <laughs> Lift high the Lord, our banner. Lift high the Lord, Jesus King. Lift high the Lord, our banner. Lift high your praise to him sing, for he is wonderful, for he reigns on high, for he is marvelous, the Lord draweth nigh. Lift high the Lord our banner, lift high the Lord Jesus King, lift high the Lord our banner, lift high your praise to him sing, lift high the Lord our banner. Lift high your Lord. That's uh, one of those tenor notes that you try to get. I hope that God means that much to each one of you. That he is your God. He is your king. Lift high his banner so that others can see. Um, are we ready for crown him with many crowns? Still not working, so you said... How excellent. <laughs> Clicker's not clicking. Hmm? What was the number on the hymn? Two... Two, two, three. So open the hymn book. No batteries required. Mm. 
Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake, my soul, and sing of him who died for thee. And hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Crown him the Lord of love, behold his hands and side. Great wounds yet visible above, in beauty glorified. All hail, Redeemer, hail, for thou hast died for me. Thy praise and glory shall not fail throughout eternity. Crown him the Lord of life, who triumphed o'er the grave, who rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save. His glories now we sing, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. Crown him the Lord of heaven, one with the Father known, one with the Spirit through him give from yonder glorious throne. To thee be endless praise for us. Days adored and magnified. My guess is the words didn't match. Okay. I was reading through the verses and I went, well, Lord, um, those aren't the ones I remember from the hymnal. <clears throat> Sing unto the Lord. Do you have the ability up in the booth to actually change the slides, or do you? Oh, the clicker's clicking. <clears throat> Londa, how many times are we going through what on each of these? Once through the first thing, twice on the second one. Sing unto the Lord a new song. And it again has a little key change and goes straight into the next song. Bless the Lord, O my soul. I never quite understood why it was so important to sing a new song to the Lord. But every time that God did something fantastic for Israel, they made a new song. And it was a way to remember things. So singing a new song means something happened in your life. You had a reason to write a song. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. For God is great and greatly to be praised. God is great and greatly to be praised. 
Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. with a clicker that started to work. We got through the songs. You sang other verses than we did. But we can bless the Lord on his Sabbath day. Do we have a kid's sto story this morning? And do you need a stand for the microphone? I'll get one. You can hold it? Okay. What is it? All the kids up through about 70 can come to the front row. <laughs> You're going to sit down. I would, I would if I was you. There's the microphone. Let's walk, please. Good morning, children, and all the little older children in here, since we all have a little bit of a child in us. Not everybody lets their little child show, but we all have a little bit of it in us. <laughs> Sandy said some of us are in our second childhood. And thank you to all the children that helped take up the children's offering. Okay, everybody come on up to the front. Thank you. Okay, hi kids of all ages. All right, today, well this week when I was thinking about a children's story, no stories came. And that's unusual for me. So I started praying about it. And I said, please give me a story to tell to the children. 
And instead of a story, God gave me a Bible verse. Do you know what gifts are? Yeah? Do you get gifts at Christmas? Mm -hmm. Do you get gifts at your birthday? And do you like gifts? They're pretty good, aren't they? Aren't yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my Bible verse says, even you, and, and Jesus is talking to us as people, okay? Even you who know, or who are bad, know how to give good things to your children. So people aren't bad when they follow Jesus and they love Jesus. And Let's see, how do I say this? I don't want to get it wrong. Because everybody is born a sinner. And all through our lives, we do things that are bad sometimes. And we ask Jesus to forgive us. Well, when we're born into this world, we're considered sinners or bad, okay? Because... Let me finish the story, okay? I, I want you to understand this, because I know kids can understand Bible verses, and this is really good, okay? Okay, so the Bible calls us, even though we are bad, like I'm bad because I sin, Jesus loves me anyway, and he loves you anyway. So, we know what, how to give good things to our children, and your mom and dad know how to give good things to you. It says, so surely your heavenly Father knows how to give the gift. You know what a gift is? Something good? Your heavenly Father knows how to give the gift of the Holy Spirit to people who ask it from him. Do you girls know what that means? The Holy Spirit is somebody who talks to us in this little voice in our heads, in our minds, that tells us maybe taking that candy bar from the grocery store, that's not a good idea. You shouldn't do that. And so if we listen to the Holy Spirit, he tells us those things. He tells us what to do and what not to do to be loving children for Jesus. Isn't that cool? And there's a Bible verse that says, even you who, know, who are bad know how to give good things to your children, which our parents do. So surely your heavenly Father, which is God in heaven, knows how to give the Holy Spirit the gift to those who ask for him. That's pretty cool. And I'm really thankful that Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit as a gift to us that will be with us all our lives. That's pretty cool. All right, you can go sit with your parents again. Thank you for listening. I got one that's on today, really on. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Our text this morning is Hebrews 4, verses 4 through 16. And I'm, and I'm reading it out of the New Living Translation this morning. It's one of the verses that was read in in the Sabbath school class this morning. And this is a lot of a little different translation though. So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the son of God, 
Let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly. Let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. And aren't there times in all of our lives when we definitely need God's grace more than other times when we need it most? Uh, <clears throat> we're going to sing our prayer song, and I invite you to kneel <clears throat> for prayer. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch Him, and say that we love Him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Our kind Heavenly Father, we come today thanking you for the many, many blessings that you have given to us in our lives today, this past week, and we know that in the future also, you're going to be blessing us as we continue to walk in the path that you ask us to walk. As this verse said, you have gone before us and there's nothing that we have to suffer or go through or be tested by that you did not suffer here for us long ago. And you died that we might have this opportunity to someday live throughout eternity with you. We thank you for these blessings that you have given to us, for that opportunity that you have given to us. I pray now for, <clears throat> for those who are unable to be with us today, maybe because of sickness or various other reasons. Um, be with them, I pray. Help them to feel your presence in their lives. Help them to know you as we would like to be known, as you would like to be known. Um, we thank you for the word that is going to be brought to us this morning to be with Je Judy as she gives us the message that you have given her to share with us. We thank you, Lord, on your holy day that we can be here in your sanctuary hearing your word and be with us as we go throughout the week ahead that we will live for you each day, that we will be a shining light for you to any that we come in contact with. We want to be like you, Lord, and we thank you for blessing us in Jesus name amen open our eyes Lord we want to see Jesus to reach out and touch him and say that we love him open our ears Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Good morning. I will say that having the computer stuff go wrong and all of that, it kind of made me smile because, um, I don't know, when I get up in front, sometimes I feel like, uh, <clears throat> 
I feel like I'm Humpty Dumpty who just crashed. <laughs> so when I'm finished, you can all sweep up the pieces and you know everything will be okay. <laughs> all right. Um, I started when I started preparing this. Um, I was doing. I did a little word study. Um, and I know this is a real basic word for all of us, the word prayer. Um, but I looked it up because sometimes you find some interesting things associated with it. And a, a prayer is a, a solemn request for help or an expression of thanks addressed to God or an object of worship. It's an address or a petition to God in word or thought, an earnest hope or wish. Now, there are similar related words, um, an invocation, intercession, and devotion. They're just kind of words that you just see come up around that word. And then I found something on the internet, so it's really reliable, you know. Um, <laughs> But it was kind of a, a little thing about how much prayer, the, the word prayer, has been seen in literature and of different times. And it was, it was just kind of interesting, you know, the, you're going along. And in the 1800s, um, prayer was mentioned, you know, however, it didn't say how many times, but, you know, it was pretty common. And then... About 1820, it started going up. And then um, around 1844, 1845, there was a real peak in the use of the word. And I thought that was kind of interesting. And then by 1850, everything had taken a dive and it was going down. And, oops. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> I like to have illustrations, right? <laughs> anyway, it uh, went down rather markedly and all through the, the 20th century. And then it, it took a sharp turn about 2019. And of course, they didn't have too much information after that, but it definitely went up. So, uh, you know, it was just kind of interesting to me that the word prayer um, would follow history, you know, just, um, so prayer is a conversation with God. And as I was growing up, the words prayer, the, the word prayer was, um, pretty common in our family. Um, we had morning and evening worship. We learned our memory verses every week. We learned to pray when we were just little, little people, babies. Things were much simpler, you know, when you're, when you're little, when you're young. And if you have a problem, just talking to Jesus makes everything okay. And you guys may, some of you may remember the story <clears throat> Not story. The song, A Little Talk with Jesus. In trials of every kind, praise God, we always find a little talk with Jesus makes it right, all right. And, um, you know, I, I think that's true. It makes a big difference to us. Now, as, as we got older, of course, we got a little bit more cynical about things. I remember when I was 10, 12 years old, our family went to prayer meeting every Wednesday night. <clears throat> Frankly, it was all pretty boring for me. Um, we did have a song service, which, you know, I liked that. Then there was a talk by the pastor and elder, and then there was a prayer request. Now that sometimes got quite interesting. We needed to know who needed prayer, and sometimes we learned way more than that. Um, and that's actually how I learned about the pastor's daughter 
one week the pastor wasn't there. <laughs> and uh, I found out that his, it's, it's safe there. Uh, I found out that his teenage daughter was a wild child. <laughs> And, you know, I don't know how wild she was. I think that she was probably a pretty nice kid. Um, but she was a teenager, and some of the people didn't approve. And, you know, so she got prayed for. Um, and I've probably been prayed for over the years for similar things, you know? <laughs> so then um, people started to pray, and that's a good thing, right? Well... My brother, Bill, and I got bored really fast with that. So um, I started bringing a little purse to prayer meeting. And in the purse, I had a little tablet of paper and a pencil. And we started timing people. We would sit, we would sit where, where we could see. <laughs> We could see the clock at the back. And um, so we would time to see, you know, we wanted the total time, but also individual people because there were some people who prayed way too long, we thought. And um, there was actually, there was a record. Now, I don't know. It's been a while since this happened. And I lost the purse that had the paper in it. But as I recall, it was 18 minutes that this person prayed. That's a long prayer. And when you're 10 or 12 years old, it seems even longer. And I used to wonder, why? Why do we do this? What is the purpose of our prayers? And how should we pray? Well, why we pray? It's a request for <clears throat> a request for help. Um, we need to express thanks, and we can petition God for someone else. And something that I hadn't thought about before until this week, I mean, I suppose I thought of it, but not made this connection. We ask God, or talk to God, to receive mercy and grace. And in Hebrews 4.18, it says, Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. And... I think maybe that is what C.S. Lewis meant when he said, I pray because I can't help myself. I pray because I am helpless. It does not change God, but it changes me. Now, as to how we pray, in Matthew 5, Jesus tells us how to pray. But before he does that, he tells us how not to pray. Don't pray to get attention from people. Don't babble on and on. Keep it short and sweet. Jesus even re recommends going into your room and shutting the door for some prayers. And I think that would have been a really good plan for some of the people who were at that prayer meeting. Then Jesus gives us a, pr and a, a prayer as an example in Matthew 5, 19 through 13. And I'm going to be reading it from the uh, NIV. This is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. It's a beautiful prayer, and it covers all the basics. But how close do we have to stick to the pattern? In Jeremiah 33, 3, God says, Call on me, 
and I will answer. Now that seems pretty simple to me. So, help. <laughs> and that's all we need to say. I remember when I was a little kid, my dad would uh, get me doing some, some chore, and then he would say, okay, there you go, you know how to do it. Holler if you need me. Well, of course, then I would go, help! <laughs> you know, and it's nice to know that someone is there to help us, but they might not, uh, my father didn't, wouldn't know unless I said that I needed his help. And I think that God, a lot of times, well, I think he helps us sometimes, even when we're not paying attention, but it helps if we cry out for him to help us. In Steps to Christ, chapter 11, we're told that prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. Not that it is necessary in order to make known to God what we are, but in order to enable us to receive him. Prayer does not bring God down to us, but it brings us up to him. Now, I don't know about your conversations with friends, but do you have any friends that you can converse with about anything? Maybe a friend that can finish your sentences when you space out. Not that I would do that, of course, but yeah. <laughs> a friend that laughs at the same quirky jokes. A friend who listens to you when you're in pain. A friend who can tell you when you see another friend, that you can tell when you see another friend who needs help. And maybe you even have suggestions about how they should help. And maybe a friend who isn't offended when you get upset and get a little bossy. As, I need this, and I need it now. Do you have a friend who will tell you the truth even if, even if you might get mad? Do you have a friend you can just sit with and not say a word? Just be there? Well, that's what I think our conversations with Jesus should be. As we spend time with Jesus talking and listening, we'll learn more about Jesus and his love for us. And we'll continue to be amazed at the things that Jesus does for us and the things that he will tell us. And finally, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, the Bible tells us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all things. And I think that as we do that, we draw closer and closer to Jesus and we learn more about him. And isn't that what we want? I receive a lot of phone calls from numbers I don't recognize. And usually it's that silence, you know, and you're like, ah, it's another scam call. So when I see one that does not have a name attached to it, it's just a number, I've started answering at prayer line, how may I pray for you today? So far they've all hung up, but one of these days, and I tell you that maybe you can do the same and this thing will spread. It's, it's an amazing thing, prayer is. Thank you, Judy for that. More about Jesus. Is it on? More about Jesus I would know, more of his grace to others show, more of his saving fullness see. 
more of his love who died for me more more about jesus more more about jesus more of his saving fullness see more of his love who died for me more about jesus let me learn more of his holy will discern spirit of god my teacher be showing the things of christ to me more more about jesus more more about jesus more of his saving fullness see more of his love who died for me more about jesus in his word holding communion with my lord hearing his voice in every line making each faithful saying mine more more about jesus more more about jesus more of his saving fullness see more of his love who died for me more about jesus on his throne riches in glory all his own more of his kingdom sure increase more of his coming prince of peace more more about jesus more more about jesus more of his saving fullness see more of his love who died for me Shall we bow our heads? Dear Father, I thank you so much for your love and care for us. I thank you for sending Jesus to be our friend. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.